Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna to have a quick talk about the state of the used car market in 2024. I think a lot of changes are coming. A lot of dealerships are closing down. In fact, a lot of them have closed already. And I thought we'd just have a talk about it, kind of look at some of the things that have closed down, discuss some of the reasons why they might be closing down and what my predictions are for the year going forward. So car dealers closing is something that's been on my radar since the end of last year, I noticed some real kind of big names, big names in the world of, you know, uh, social media users, people that you might follow, they've got a big dealership, they're doing really well, they're great with social media, and it looks like they're absolutely flying, but have actually ended up going into liquidation. Now, I have got these articles here um, about these two uh, particularly big names that recently, one's uh, in the Midlands, one's in Weatherby, Yorkshire, that you just would not expect to be going under, going into liquidation or to be closing down due to a difficult market, but they have. And while I got the articles up here on the page, I could talk you through some of the details and the reasons why it happened, but actually these are people's businesses. And as a business owner, you know, I'm not here to try and make out like, you know, they, they weren't good business people, because in fact, I think considering the levels that these businesses have got to, they're much better business people than I am. It's just a sign of a very difficult market at the moment, and b I think it's hard to understand just how much harder it gets when you really scale up a used car dealership. And I'm sure any business, you start going up in levels, volumes of staff, uh, quantity of stock turnover. It just it's like compound interest. It's not just a next step harder; it's four times harder. The next time it's eight times harder. The next time it's sixteen times harder. It's very hard to describe how much harder it gets. So I have nothing but admiration for these companies, actually. It's a shame that the market is tricky, but I imagine all these will be back bigger and better. So we don't really need to talk about that, but it's not just the big independents. I'm sure absolutely hundreds of small independent garages have been closing down as well. It's just that they weren't multi-award winning businesses, so we don't necessarily know about them. You know, they might be big in their area, but they're not necessarily featuring in Car Dealer Magazine, etc. for us to know that they've ceased trading. The reality is, I bet there's been hundreds of small independent dealerships that have gone under as well. It's been a very bizarre three or four years in the used car market, and I'm sure in most markets in the UK and worldwide, I'm sure, where prices have been going up and up and up, and it's been difficult to source, and then prices start coming back down again. And I know a lot of people will be watching thinking, oh, the dealers have been having it away because the prices of used cars have been going up and you know they're well overpriced and they've been profiting loads. It's one of my pet peeves here and that over and over because I don't think people really understand this is an ongoing business. So they, they might have been some benefit at the beginning of a lockdown where you had, you know, a stockpile of cars, they were valued at one thing. After lockdown, everyone wanted to buy them and the values were higher. They made some profit there, but then they need to replace that stock and everything is at a higher value. So they had to spend more to buy stock. It was more expensive to stock the same amount of cars. And then they just carry on working for the same margins as they always did. It's just the value of the product has gone higher. You know, an iPhone didn't used to cost 1300 pounds. It used to be, I don't know, let's say 500 pounds. They probably still made the same amount of profit on it, but maybe it's got more expensive to buy, inflation, etc. So it hasn't been a case that dealers have just been having it away. Yes, there might have been more demand and things like that, which has helped the business, but they haven't been making necessarily more profits just because prices of used cars are up because they've had to buy them as well. Secondly, then when there's a big price adjustment, like there was in November or December, about 4.2% a piece, I think at the moment, uh, since the beginning of November, we are down about 10%. That is a massive knock-on effect. Again, if you're stocked up and you've been buying these cars at inflated prices to try and have some stock to sell, to make a profit, to feed your family, then when 10% gets wiped off the value of a stock, of course, that is incredibly hard. That hits your cash flow incredibly hard. Most of these businesses are going to be borrowing money in order to be trading. So when you start losing money like that, it becomes more and more difficult to pay your staff, pay your bills, and these things are like a chain reaction out and they start building up and it just gets harder and harder. Of course, it's not just the small dealers either, the big corporations such as Constellation Group who own Weebiny Car, BCA, and Cinch. Last year posted losses of 104 million 
Kazoo, the online car giant who probably won themselves no friends within the car trade, are on the brink of going under. There's an article here from the Car Dealer magazine saying, used car dealer Kazoo says it faces going under as it reveals new cash crisis. I mean, they've literally only just done some kind of debt trade with shareholders in order to reduce their debt down. That was a deal worth about 600 million. And now they're saying they haven't got enough cash to carry them out trading throughout the year because they're making such huge losses. The Inchcape Group is saying it could offload all of its UK dealerships, but says a sale isn't certain. And this is because they are a franchise dealer and the UK government in its infinite wisdom has brought in a scheme where car makers must sell 22% electric vehicles in 2024, or they get fined 15,000 pounds per vehicle over that that isn't an electric vehicle. And you can imagine how difficult this would be for franchise dealers because people don't really want electric vehicles in that volume and trying to convince them to buy those cars when someone doesn't want it or face a £15,000 fine for having sold a petrol car. It's literally putting a boot on the throat of the UK car industry and saying you will do this, otherwise you know, you're going to be fined into oblivion. It's bizarre. It's making life so difficult for them, and I can understand why a lot of dealerships are giving up their franchise to these big car manufacturers because it simply isn't going to work for them. They can see that there's already a problem. For example, there's a garage local to us that we do a lot of work for. They have a Fiat affiliation, which they've now given up because they just know it's simply not going to be viable and they do not want to be paying £15,000 fines for every petrol or diesel car that they sell because it's not an electric vehicle that customers just don't want. So unless there's a huge turnaround from the government once they realise that this clearly isn't working, I think we're going to see a lot of manufacturer names disappearing from garages because it just simply won't be worth it. Okay, so I just wanna take a quick minute to talk about today's video sponsor, which is Surfshark. Surfshark is my preferred VPN, keeping all of my devices safe from my phone, laptop, and home network, mainly because of the ease of use. I've used some other VPNs before and they're just complicated, very hard to use, and just confusing. If you don't know what a VPN is, it stands for Virtual Private Network. It's basically a big safe around everything you're doing on your device. It keeps it safe from your data going missing. It can tell you which websites have had a data breach. It can tell you whether any of your passwords have been lost via data breaches on websites. If you're just starting out as a trader and you don't have a Cap HBI account or any way of valuing cars, then maybe like me, you'd have gone to We Buy Any Car and probably found out that after a while they block you. Well, a VPN can change your IP address so you can access for as long as you need to to help get the valuations that you need for your business. It can even change your IP address to put you in a different country. So if you use Netflix like I do and you're looking for a film that isn't there, you might be able to change your geographical location to somewhere where that program is available. So if I try and look for the new Batman film with Robin Pattinson, it does not show up on Netflix UK. So I'm gonna head to this little tab up here, which is my little Surfshark plugin that I've added. And I'm gonna quickly connect to Salt Lake City, United States. Then we'll refresh this page. And there it is. That film is now available to me and I can watch it. Do you know what I really like about Surfshark as well? If you've got a Fire TV stick at home like I have, you can download the Surfshark app on there. You can change your VPN to a different area on there. So your Netflix on your TV, you can have as well. So I can go home now, turn my settings onto America and watch Batman from the comfort of my sofa. Surfshark are always running absolutely amazing deals. Currently you can get up to 83% off. Use my code SHIFTINGMETAL, you can get up to six months free and you get a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's absolutely no reason not to try it. And I highly recommend it. So that covers small and large independent dealers. It covers franchise dealers. But what about the massive car supermarkets of the world as well? Are we going to see a rise or fall of them? Well, frankly, I think car supermarkets, which seem to rely hugely on additional extras that they sell, are going to have a very hard year this year as well. And I think we could see a few of those dropping off the map as well. If you're at an auction, you can always tell when you're bidding against a car supermarket because they are willing to pay practically retail price, if not more, in order to get the stock that they need. And that's because when it comes to actually selling the car, they may sell it for the same price that they bought it for, but they know that they're gonna charge the customer a two or 300 pound admin fee. 
they are going to sell it to you with finance. And if they don't, they're going to charge you an extra fee for the fact that it's not finance. Or they, I know of some car supermarkets where basically you find a price online for a car. You will go in and say, I want to buy that for £10,000. They say, sorry, that's the, uh, that's the finance price. If it's cash, it's 10500 or something. I'm sure that's not legal, but trust me, I know it is happening out there. Then, of course, they rely hugely on things like additional warranties, selling you extended warranties at an inflated price gives them an extra profit as well. Even if it is a third party, they're charging you more than they're paying for it, so they get an extra money that way. All the added extras that you know about, like the diamond shine, you know, ceramic coating on your paint and things like that, which you may or may not want, but again, they are making a profit out of it. And gap insurance is another big money maker for things like car supermarkets. But there's a problem with that now. In this article from Car Dealer Magazine, it's saying the FCA effectively banning car dealers from selling gap insurance from February. Sources say the FCA is asking insurers to voluntarily withdraw gap insurance products from sale. The insurance covers the difference between what a buyer paid and what they owe on finance in the event of a write-off. The policies have high commissions and dealers fear this has prompted the investigation. FCA disappointed with the market's response to its warning about gap made in September. Regulator says that despite voluntary withdrawal rumours, it has no plans to ban gap insurance. Now, this is one of those things. Again, yes, they're making profit on it, but... I'm not sure that a lot of consumers mind so long as they pay. What they want is peace of mind. So if their car is written off uh, in six months' time after they bought it and say it's an electric vehicle and the value is absolutely tanked, but when it comes to getting paid out by their insurance, the car's value is a lot less. They're not going to get all the money that they paid for that car back. That's where gap insurance steps in and it will pay the difference to make sure that you can buy yourself another car of a kind of equal value. One car dealer said, we sell a lot of these policies as they are of genuine benefit to customers, especially when a new car depreciates quickly as soon as it leaves the dealership. In those early months of owning a new car, the difference between what the insurer will pay out for it and what is owed on finance rarely matches, so I think these policies are good for consumers. Now it doesn't look like FCA are actually going to bring in a ban completely on gap insurance, but they clearly are closing in on commission-based products. They've brought in rules recently so that dealers have to be upfront about how much commission they're making out of a finance deal when taking it out. Again, if they're a car supermarket and they're relying heavily on those things, that potentially could impact them. So I think we could see a scale back of sorts of car supermarkets as well. Exactly how much or when that'll happen, I don't know, but definitely the market is changing. So what do I think is happening with the car market in 2024? Well, surprisingly, the prices are actually starting to go back up again. Internal combustion engine cars are up by about 2% in January. EVs, unsurprisingly, are down, which makes the average a very small drop in January. But on the whole, I think prices will be going up. And as some of these massive deals, which will be coming for electric vehicles in 2024, the price of EVs uh, is probably in for a bit of a rough ride again. All those models that people have paid a premium for, they are just not going to be worth as much anymore. If you are in the market for an electric vehicle, I would definitely hold out to see what some of the deals come about in 2024 because obviously dealers do not want to get fined for not selling electric vehicles, so there is a huge incentive to mark them down. For example, I believe Honda are only offering one fully electric vehicle, but they are going to market it at the same price point as the petrol or diesel equivalent which just doesn't normally happen. The electric vehicles are usually a lot more expensive. I don't think the used car market is going anywhere. It's probably one of our strongest industries in the whole country. Uh, I think that on the whole, the trend is going to be good for the used car industry this year. And interestingly, my personal opinion is that while there's been this shift over the last few years of putting everything to online, to big companies stepping in, feeling like they're going to change the market, they know how consumers want to buy cars, they want to make it easy and do it online. Well, actually, if you ask me, if you look around at the car market and you look at the dealers who really are doing well, and we're talking doing well as in terms of customer satisfaction, as well as profits and expansion, it's the dealers who are really leaning into customer service, personal service, having a connection with your customer and providing them something that you don't get when you order a car online and it arrives and you have a problem and you have to sort it out via emails and there's not someone you can speak to. They are the dealerships that are flourishing and maybe that should be a lesson for all of us that you should lean into that. No matter what I've done in business, I've always said it doesn't matter what product you're selling, what you're really selling is customer service. So maybe this is a sign of that. Customers are getting fed up being charged over the odds for add-on products. They're 
fed up of being charged extra for having an electric vehicle, which then depreciates massively in value, and they're sick of not being able to have a personal relationship with the person they bought the car from, being able to phone someone up. Someone at Barra Motors, for example, Jason, if he sells a car, someone can phone up and say, can I speak to Jason? We've had a flat tire or something. Can we pop in and see it? And you can do it. You don't have to call through to some kind of telephone line. But of course, that's just my opinion. And I would love to hear yours in the comments. So make sure you get down there and let me know what you think about the used car market. Kazoo is a whole other story. We'll probably do a separate video on them where I can tear them a new one because I think that's probably the worst investment you could have ever made. But we'll get into that another time. I hope you found the video interesting and enjoyable. If you have, make sure you do give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. You can find all of my merchandise as well as my podcast on my website, shiftingmetal.co.uk. If you need a vehicle transported, we are here to help you. Head to barrymotors.co.uk forward slash transport where we can give you a quote. I think that's everything. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe.